how they can do it, so what's the happen in your eyes? Everybody knows the circumstances that we've been facing for a long time. And every game we're playing now, we're playing for our lives. There's a way things are done in basketball. And two technical fouls at halftime in a 40-second span is not the way basketball games are refed. I probably deserved one technical foul. The foul count was 16 to 6. I haven't said a word about the refereeing all season long. And the stats and the numbers kind of show themselves there. Um, but there's a way things are done in professional basketball. And ejecting me over what the conversation that we had at halftime, well, I didn't curse or anything like this, in my opinion, is completely against everything. Um, and it wasn't warranted. One technical foul, yes. The ejection, 100% no. At the same time, I'm really proud of my players. I'm really pr proud of my coaching staff responding the right way, doing things the right way, playing the right way, facing adversity and overcoming. And I think this is a great step for us. Um, starting with you, was it the ejection? Um, you know, what was it like for you? Very frustrating, because we're together in the trenches. Well, everything that's happened to this team from day one is happening to all of us together. And we're fighting through it, shoulder to shoulder. So to not be there with my guys, with my players, hurts. Did you swear them or anything like that on, on the court, no? No, I never swear. Um, what was it like for the second half here? I mean, did you have a TV in the, the team locker room? You know, watch the game on TV? I mean, what, what was it like for you? There I sweared. I was alone in my office, and there I was swearing a lot, but it was fun to see the guys compete and respond and do things the right way. How many times have you been ejected before? It's not many, is it? Never. It's my first one. Um, and just on the foul disparity in the first half, what did you make of that? I mean, how frustrating was that? I mean, do you think you were pretty hard done by some of the calls in the first half? I think there were normal mistakes that happened within a basketball game. I don't think it was equal. We were definitely aggressive on offense. You're driving, attacking, Parker's in the paint, every possession. And I don't think it should have had that kind of disparity. And this is exactly the reason I went to talk to the refs at halftime. That being said, it's not about the refs. Let's not make this press conference about the refs. Let's not make this about me being ejected. All those things are secondary. What's important is how we played. Yeah, just moving on from there, I mean, how pivotal was that win tonight for the team? Obviously, as you say, fighting for your, for your season, fighting for your lives out there, um, from the response from the guys, especially their staff. Oh, okay. Extremely. Um, we felt very good coming into this game. We had a great week of practice, which we really needed. Uh, I felt we settled into the way we wanted to play. Um, and getting to do it and doing it the right way in the game was great. Um, I hope this is something that we ride on, because we played a very good game against Tasmania and then went back home and didn't finish the job. So we're now we're flying across the ditch for a back-to-back -back against a very good team that's waiting for us, that's not playing in a back-to-back, -back, and we need to go and have another good game. I mean, it, it won't throw this win out the window, but we're in a situation where we need to pick up wins everywhere we can. Um, we're going to play against a very good team, very talented, very deep, who's preparing for us for a very long time. Um, it's going to be a great challenge, and I'm looking forward to see what we got. I think we just showed fight. Um, our intensity was up from the start. Obviously, there were lapses during the game, but I think the ball was moving. You know, we're being aggressive. You know, doing what we did for the obviously the fever break helped us. Ten days, you know, to kind of recoup and you know rethink. And I think what the, the boys started off from the jump, brought their energy, and the bench was amazing, and the crowd obviously too. So just got to keep moving forward from that. Let's sort of fire up the guys when you lose Brady at half time. Obviously, you've got some great assistance, and Dan did a great job in the second half. But does that sort of fire the guys up a little bit, spur you on in the second half? I mean, we were fired up from the start. You know, obviously, we that that break, and we obviously lost the game before that, so we were just fired up. And obviously, we trust in Modi and, and what he does. And we just went out there and, you know, did, gave it our all. And we knew he was back there watching and, like you said, cussing. 
So, uh, yeah, I mean, we were all fired up from the jump. Well, you can't ask what you just obviously have to do some memory. You're going to touch the league officer and play that around the referee. Or you, I mean, did we sort of reach out to them or did you just let it go? Or how did you approach them? It's a good question. I think this is definitely something that's worth a discussion. Uh, we all have the same goal. We all care about our teams and our league. There's definitely something here to talk about. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Uh, what will stand out on the stat sheet is the seven from 11 from three. What stands out to me is the four hustle plays that he had in the second half. Um, we were out of rhythm a little bit. We were kind of protecting our lead, and Adelaide caught rhythm. It went down to single digits, and Isaiah made two huge defensive plays on loose balls uh, and kept them alive. Um, that's winning basketball. So. Yeah, my expectations from Isaiah is are very, very high, and today he played that way. I wanted to ask you about Mango Manu, because he's one player that, for whatever reason, just hasn't been allowed to play much this season. But, and tonight he had his frustrations, but when he was on the court, he had such an, such an impact. I think he was twice at 18 when he was on the court. Can you just talk about the influence that, that he had? We still haven't seen the best version of Mango. Um, I still think there's more there. He anchored us today in the paint, and that was very important. He anchored us on the glass. He's doing a really good job on the defensive glass. He's part of the reason we've completely stabilized in that area. I think one of the things he did best today was screen. Um, he set incredible screens for Parker, uh, which is a team that tried to go under. His angles were perfect. His timing was great. This freed our offense up in many ways. Um, yeah, good game from him, and he's coming in the next one against one of the biggest challenges that his position has to offer in the league. And I'm looking to see him respond. And is he just on period? I know it was a couple of years ago now since you were at the Phoenix, but it's still your former team. And the old home court, was it always, always fun to go back and play a former team? Yeah, obviously it's always, you know, it's been a couple of years, but it's always fun to go back and play the team that you started at. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's just another game, um, just moving forward. Obviously, trying to come in and get the win, and you know, do it again. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you very much.